channel um, I do apologize for the state of my hair um, I was actually filming <laughs> for this segment but um, it was meant to be a get ready with me slash talking about films the makeup went fine but I took the hair out and it didn't go right and um, I just thought I'd start again anyway yes we are talking about Halloween films today um, don't be mad at me but I haven't actually ever seen, you know, the traditional, maybe scary Halloween type films, you know, like Friday the 13th, um, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I know the references, I know the characters, I've heard of them before, but I've just never got around to seeing the films. So, but I am making that my plan for when uh, Halloween night comes around, we are going to sit and binge watch all the original ones. I know they have a few of the remakes on Netflix and I think on Prime as well, but I really want to try watching them try watching the originals first. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the films I typically like to watch around this year. To be honest, a few of them I'll watch every day of the year, but I thought maybe scary, spooky, Halloween-y kind of things, but none of them are really that scary, maybe by one. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So I was meant to have a top five, um, but it turned out to be a top six because there was one, I can't remember which one, but I, I couldn't choose between them anyway, there's, there's five. Uh, movies I've chosen, and my first one is Tim Burton's The Eastwood Juice. I love this film, and I'm going to be saying this for all the films, but I love this film. Anything Tim Burton, yes. Michael Keaton's Beetle Juice, yes. Um, and also, because it inspired one of my favourite musicals, Beetlejuice, the musical, I've never actually seen it. Um, it was on Broadway. Um, I don't think it ever came to the UK. I don't know if it ever is, but if it does, I'm getting to it, so go see it. But yes, my uh, Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice, I love him. Um, for a, the longest time I had no idea it was him. I only really knew him from Batman, I know the Tim, well, the Tim Burton Batman. Um, this is the story of a couple called Barbara and Adam who sadly die and become ghosts and another family move into their own house. So they spend the movie trying to get these people out and they hire uh, Beetlejuice who is a human exorcist for help. Um, he's a little bit um, shall we say out there with his techniques and they decide not to use them but in the meantime um, Anna and Barbara befriend the family's daughter Lydia who is a bit you know kooky and weird and no one really gets her kind of thing and it's just a really nice story and with the Tim Burton artistry the costumes it's just everything I love in a film and I guess maybe it's a little bit scary in places but it's more to be fun and kooky and I think my favourite scene um, was that where, is, if you've seen it before, where they're at the dinner table and they start singing because Barbara and Adam possess them and their dinners come to life. I think that's my favourite part of the whole film. And yeah, a Tim Burton film. There is going to be a lot of Tim Burton in here. I'm a bit biased. But yes, my number six favourite Halloween film, Beetlejuice. Okay, so number five uh, in our little list of Halloween films is the Adams Family. Um, I am going to be counting both because I love them both equally, but I've got the Adams Family values. I think I prefer that a little bit um, over the two, I think. But anyway, they've still got the same beautiful characters in it Morticia, Gomez, Pugsy, Wednesday, um, Vesta, and Grandma. And they also have a new baby called Pubert, I think that's what they called him. Um, so this version of the story centers around. Um, the Adams having a new baby, um, and Wednesday and Pugsley trying to murder him, as any good Adams family child would do. Um, they decide to bring in a nanny, which Fester falls in love with. Um, both of these, both of the films tend to tend to um, focus around Fester. But anyway, Fester falls in love with a nanny, who actually turns out to be a serial killer who is after him for his money. Um, and also in the meantime, the kids get sent off to summer camp by the nanny just to get them out of the way and then there's that whole saga um, where they do a play at the end of their summer camp, a Thanksgiving play, where Wednesday plays Pocahontas and they decide to burn down the camp and um, put the camp counsellors on a spit. So that's always good and, and I just love 
um, oh, what was her name as the nanny? And I um, I love June Kozak as the nanny Debbie. Um, she plays a good serial killer in the way of that she's very cheery and happy, but she can also be very psycho and scary at the same time. Um, but no, I enjoyed the film and obviously the whole typical Adam's family aesthetic that comes along with it, the house and the creatures and how they just seemingly tend to, you know, like do weird things like murder people and or whatever and they find it amusing. Anyway, the kind of characters where they do bad things but you still love them for them. So my number five in my Halloween list of films is The Adam's Family. Another Tim Burton film because I love Tim Burton and if he probably, actually, I was going to say if he did The Adam's Family I'd probably love it even more but he is working on a Adam's Family TV series or so I hear so fingers crossed that comes up. Um, but yes, another Tim Burton classic, The Corpse Bride. Again, I love this film. This was the first ever Tim Burton, I think, animation I've ever come across um, before The Nightmare Before Christmas, but this was the first time I ever watched and I fell in love with it straight away. The animation, you know, the, the, this type of like, the gothic aesthetic, the thin, drawn out characters, the desaturation of colour, um, but I also love this because obviously, um, well I'll get to it in a second, but we have a contrast between the living and the dead, how the living seem to be, to be very dull and desaturated in colour, whereas the dead seem to be more lively and popping with bright colours. Anyway, so this centres around a character called uh, Vincent van Dort. He is due to be married to a um, aristocratic lady, Victoria. Um, her parents are marrying her off to Victor's family because they have no money and I think Victor's family like own a fish fish business anyway, they have a bit of money anyway. Um, they meet each other for the first time and and they seem to fall in love which is so cute and, and they go for a wedding rehearsal which goes wrong and then Victor ends up in the woods trying to recite his vows to get them right and he, there he meets his corpse bride, Emily, um, and then we learn her backstory of um, how she died, how she was due to be married and eloped with a man that she loved, but then he um, murdered her, which is really sad, but the song that goes with it is amazing anyway. Um, like I was saying, I, re I really love the contrast that Tim Burton did of the, obviously the living being very dull and very prim and proper and um, boring, <laughs> and then the land of the dead scene being very like full of colour and life, so it's like you live more once you're dead, that kind of aesthetic I thought it was quite cool and the story I love and the characters I love and again anything Tim Burton I will watch but yes my number four yes my number four spot on my Halloween list is The Cox Bride. Now this one is more of a like typical spooky scary film rather than a, a cutesy cartoon or a children's film this is my number three spot which is the Scream series. Um, this is probably the first scary film that I like scary film that I liked watching. Um, I, <laughs> um, I actually heard about this I don't know how I didn't hear about it, but I actually was inspired to watch this after watching do you remember the scary movie franchises the first ever scary movie which is kind of based off Scream and all those kind of teen slasher movies that's what led me to watch Scream and I don't know why it was the other way around but anyway um, yeah, this is the first quintessentially horror slasher film that I liked. Um, it was kind of a murder mystery whodunit in a slasher film. It was the first of its kind, I mean obviously it was before my time, but I could apparently hearing about it. Um, in the 90s this was like the first kind of film of, it, of its kind, so it inspired things you know like um, I know what you did last summer, or the yes, Green was one of those, and I just love it because it, it did have you suspenseful and you kept you guessing, it had like the red herrings and and wondering who it was at the end and the story was, was really good. It kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time and obviously watching it a few times now I'm not as surprised by it but I still enjoy watching it and I've probably binged it a few times this month and probably will binge it a few times before the end of October. But yes, my number four from the three spots on my Halloween list is Screen. We're going to the difficult part now. Um, it was a bit of a contest between the two uh, because I love them dearly and um, yeah, it was a really hard choice to put number two but this one I love anyway, it doesn't matter what spot it comes in but it is 
the Nightmare Before Christmas, another Tim Burton film. <laughs> um, it's my, this might as well just be the Tim Burton list at this point. Um, but yes, I love the Nightmare Before Christmas. Again, the animation, the songs, um, the kookiness of like putting something together. You know, Halloween and Christmas is again something I don't think anyone would ever have thought of. And it's always the the age old question of when do you watch this? Do you watch it at Halloween? Do you watch it at Christmas? I don't know. Do you watch it at both times? I've always been a bit conflicted, um, but I think I will be watching this uh, at both times of the year. But yes, this is based around a character called Jack Skellington, who is the Pumpkin King, the king of Halloween Town. He scares people every year. Um, and it basically shows that he's getting a bit tired of the same old routine of scaring people every year and he just wants something different. So he ends up taking over Christmas. He kidnaps Santa and everything. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love the animation, the idea behind it, the songs. Um, you can't go anywhere. I mean, even if you haven't seen this film, if you haven't seen this film, you will have heard the song, This Is Halloween. You can't avoid it it's everywhere. Um, my favourite part of the film would be the Oogie Boogie song, obviously. Uh, Jack has the children steal Santa and they give him to Oogie Boogie, who's the boogeyman. And I love his song. It's, I've played that numerous times this month and if only I could have a voice like his so I could do a parody or a rendition of it. Um, but yes, I love this film. I love all these films, but I love this film, especially another Tim Burton classic. Uh, my number two spot, The Nightmare Before Christmas. We're down to the last one, and I don't think it was, apart from The Night Before Christmas, this was a no-brainer to me, and I think I've mentioned it in another video before, my favourite Halloween film is Hocus Pocus. This film has been with me since as long as I can remember. We had it on VHS when I was younger, um, and we watched it many, many a time. Um, you know, Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, Kathy and Jimmy, what's not to love? Yeah, this one is just more for like childhood nostalgia. We've watched it over and over again. Um, my favourite part of the film, again, it always seems to be a song, but my favourite part of the film was when they sang I Put a Spell on You and, and chant the whole town, the adults of the town, so no one will believe the children that these witches are after them. And thinking about it, looking back on it, the story's quite dark. And also some of the scenes are a bit dark, especially in the beginning where these witches are about to be hung. But as a kid, I guess you never really thought about that. But yeah, I love everything about this film, this, the costumes. I have tried to um, recreate uh, one of the characters from this film for a video, so hopefully that will be coming out soon. Um, but yeah, my number one spot, my number one favourite Halloween film is Hocus Pocus. Well that was it, that was a really quick video, um, I don't know if you thought it was a bit boring but I, I really enjoyed it and I will be watching all of them later, but thank you guys so so much for watching, if you did enjoy this video please give me a like down below, and if you want to see more of my Halloween fun, because it's all coming up next week, a lot of fun coming up, please subscribe to my channel and so you can keep up with me, but if you want to keep up with me when I'm not on here, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, all of which I'll link down below, but yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you guys so, so much. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you again really soon. Damn, 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 damn.